Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I was able to dynamically retrieve data from my YouTube channel and display it on my website homepage. I was able to retrieve data like the number of videos published as well as the latest video that has been published on the channel. So everything can now be dynamically shown on the website without having me going manually to keep updating those information. I was able to do everything with the help of dynamic shortcodes and Cloud AI. So let's get right into it. The shortcode types used in today's video are the API shortcode, the build URL shortcode, the cache and the get cache shortcode, then the options, the set and the get shortcodes. Now let's take a look at how I was able to incorporate everything to do the dynamic retrieval. So let's jump right into it. To use the YouTube API, I'm assuming you have your Google account and your YouTube channel already created. So here is a documentation for how to use the YouTube data API. I'll leave a link to it and other documentation in the description so you can go ahead and check them out. So basically what you need are your Google account, then you need to create a project in the Google Developer Console and you create your credentials. So you generate your API key. So all of these, if you follow the documentation, you have to create those. Then this is where it will lead you to, to take you to the API library. And what you need here is the YouTube Data API version three. That is where you go ahead and create your project and assign the API keys. Then the next thing you need to know is how to actually generate the URL for your get parameter. And I'll leave a link to it in the description as well. So this is where you can get the code snippets. All you need is you have to just find out the exact one you need. Most times we need the search. That's the one we'll be using. And the other ones, you, then we use the method as list. And you can go ahead and see how to generate the URL from here. But to save ourselves the time, I already went ahead to ask Claude to generate the URL for me, which we'll take a look at now. And this is how the URL looks like. Basically, it is quite simple and you can just use this within the API shortcode and you get it all done. So what we have here is this URL. So this is the base URL. It stops at the search. Then we have our URL parameters. The ones we need are the path equal to snippet. This just retrieves the details of the video. Then we also need your channel ID, which you can get when you go into your settings. So you go to your YouTube channel, you go ahead and customize your channel. And when you go ahead and search the URL, at the top of the page, you see that URL, that is your channel ID. So you just copy that. Then we can come back to the Cloud AI and we continue from there. So the other thing we need here is max results equal to one. So basically all we need is just to use this URL in our page and just replace the channel ID with our own ID as well as the key with our API key. So let's now jump into the back end of the website and see how everything was set up. So here we are on the back end. And this is the final result of the shortcode. But don't worry, we'll go through it step by step and I will show you how everything was built. So here we have a blank one and I've just given it the name of YouTube-API. This is under dynamic shortcodes and then power shortcode. And then I went ahead and I created a new shortcode. So the first thing we need to do is actually bring in our URL. So I'll go to Cloud and copy that URL that was generated for us. Then I'll come back and then I paste it. So we have our URL here, but this is just a URL. We need to now actually do something with it. So to do something with it, we need to use the API shortcode. So the API shortcode is just come to the beginning and we start with the curly brace and say API column. And at the end, I'll close the curly brace. So we started with the API. Then to make this look nicer, I'll use the build URL 
especially because I have some options pages and other things to hide my key. So that's why we're using the build URL because that helps us to add in any kind of parameter using other shortcodes. So start with open the curly brace and say build dash URL colon and I'll close the curly brace. So now we have everything set up. Now let's actually start building the URL. The way build URL works is that first we'll define a base URL, which is everything before the question mark. And then after the question mark, we'll delete this question mark and replace it with an at symbol. And any ampers and we'll replace it with a space or a return key. So first we'll take this question mark away. So let me put that in a new line first. So this first base URL, what I'll do is wrap it in quotation marks because it's a string. So I'll just use maybe a single quotes. Then the next thing is the URL parameters. So like I said, replace the question mark with an at symbol. Maybe I'll just put in a new line. Then any of these ampers and I'll delete those and put a space. Same thing with the next one. So for the max results, then the order, the type, and the key. So we have the first step done. Let me indent it. Okay. Now we have to replace these two things. So the channel ID and the API key. The channel ID, we can get it from our YouTube channel. So I'll just copy that, come back, and replace the whole of these with that channel ID. Then I'll just make sure I put it in quotation marks as well. Because it is a string. And then the next thing we need to do is put the API key. But because I don't want to show you my API key, I added that already to the website, but I hid it in an options page. So I'll just go ahead and retrieve the options page. And the key for the options page was just secret underscore YouTube underscore API. So I'll just copy that. Unfortunately, I can't show you the options page, but basically it was created using Jet Engine. So let me go ahead and paste that here. I can wrap that in double quotation or nothing. Let me just put double quotation. Then let me indent it now. I see now the indentation works perfectly. That means there is no error. So now that we have all of these, we are good to go. But this is for the API. The trouble with API is that it will keep running every time. So to save ourselves the trouble of having to run this thing every time, because we have a quota, YouTube will only give you a certain amount of quota to be able to use the API. So to save ourselves stress, we can now wrap this in a cache shortcode so that it only runs once and then the result is stored in a cache. So how do we do that? Just simply come to the beginning and we'll say cache, we'll give the cache a key. So let me just say something like David, then this is going to be the whole thing that's going into the cache. So let me just put that maybe in square braces. It's not necessary, but I'll just do that. And I have to close the shortcode. So this is going to have the cache is going to be, as you can see from the example, cache, you give it a name and then you just put what the cache is. The other thing you need to now remember is for the cache, you can add an expiration date. I think the default is one day, but I just wanted to put it specifically because usually I post videos once a day, so I don't need to actually be showing it every eight hours or something. I just needed to show the latest video for that day. So that's why I just put expiration date to be one day. So I copy this and come just before the other one. So just at the end, and then I'll paste it there, indent it. So you see everything is indenting properly. Let me remove the space. The other thing which I didn't show here was that I added an extra security using headers in my API. So when I was creating my API in YouTube, I decided that 
it should only work for a certain domain. So it only works for my specific domain and my subdomains. So with that, you need to add an extra header. So this is what I added here, as you can see, at headers equal to the, you have to define a referrer. If you don't define the referrer to be the URL that was set up, it will not work. But if you didn't set up that restriction in your YouTube API, then you don't need these headers. This is from the YouTube documentation. They say we have to add headers for the referrer. So that's why I added it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. All of this will be in the documentation for the API. And I'll leave a proper written documentation for you to go and follow along. If you don't want to watch the video, that will be published after this video has been released. So let me just copy that. And I'll go ahead and I'll paste it within this API URL. So after the build URL, then I just paste this in. So just before the end of the API and after the build URL. So that's it. Paste that in. And that's about it. So now I can indent again, make sure everything is aligned properly. So yes, it is closing at the right point. Let's go ahead and see the actual example, see how it is. Same thing. So this is how everything is set up. Now let's go ahead and see how we can actually use this in production. So let me save these, save changes. Then I'll go ahead and copy this power shortcode, control C, and I will remember the name of the cache. The name of the cache is David. So now I'll go ahead and open a blank page and we'll try to use this in that blank page. So let me go ahead and create a demo page. So I'll say create page and I'll just call it demo API, publish it, publish. Then we'll go ahead and edit it in bricks. So here we are in the builder. The first thing we need to do is actually bring the result of that API call into the page. So what I'll do is I'll use a code element. We'll delete everything there. I want it to be executed. And I want to pass the dynamic data. Yes. Suppress any errors and render without wrapper. Okay. Then what I just do is put it in a comment. So I just put the comment symbol. Doesn't really matter. Then what I'll do is bring in the shortcode into the page. But what I want to do to save myself some stress is now set that into another variable because working with a power shortcode is a bit tedious. So what I'll do is put this into the page, but then set it to another variable and then I can now manipulate the other variable. So I'll use the open and close the curly brace and say set colon. And I'll give a variable name that I'm going to be using in the page. So say maybe something like yt. And I'll now set the power shot code to be into this variable. So paste that power shot code name. This is the name I copied from the power shot code. And finally, for the shortcut to actually be used on the page, you need to use this parameter called at value with the exclamation mark. What this does is that rather than returning the output of the power shortcut as a regular string, it returns it as a value which can now be used in another shortcut. That's why we use this at value with the pipe symbol. Okay. So what I now do is to make sure that this is working, I now use the get parameter. So get the name I put, yt, and I'll use maybe the dump r. So pipe symbol, d-u-m-p-e-double-r. Save it. Sign the code. Save it again. Okay, then I'll go ahead and preview on the front end. Before we continue, sorry, there was a bit of an error. I had to replace the quotation marks with square braces for the options page. If it was a simple string, then the quotation marks would have been okay. But because it is a shortcode, 
that is running within another shortcode. It wasn't running properly. I had to use square braces. And because it was already in the cache, I just changed the name of the cache. But that's all that we needed. So now let me go back to the page and then I'll preview it. So now you see this error. It's not actually an error. It is from the dump. And when you open it, it helps us to format the API call. That's why I like to use the dump R and you get it in a nicely formatted way. So all you have to do now is retrieve the values from this array. So as you can see, let me just zoom in a little bit. The main things we need from this array are the total results, which is the total number of videos published, that's 83. Then we need the other things, which are the latest video. So this is basically the latest video. This was the live stream I just did recently and the description and everything from here. So all you have to just do is start getting the values from the array. So let's now get this value. So it is within the snippet name. So this is the key and the value. When you see this equal to and greater than, it is showing you that this is the key name that we need and this is the value. So let's start from the beginning. So we have an array and these are keys, value pairs. So all of those, if you want to now retrieve this value of these total results, we need to now see the key is page info. The value is another array. So you have to go to page info, then get into the array and then get your value. So let's see if we can get that one first. So it is page info. So I'll copy this. But then I can come to any text on my or any element on my page. So let me just use a basic text. Then all I have to do is down say get cache column because that value has already been retrieved on the page. You can use get cache or we can use the any of them will work. We can now start getting from this code because I've already set it into a variable. We can now start using this variable however we want. So I'll say get yt. So you can either use the get cache or I'll just use get yt then double pipe symbol to try to access the array and what i'm looking for is let me just remove all the spaces i'm trying to get the page info so let me paste that and let's see if i actually did it well so i'll just put pipe symbol single pipe and dump then i'll save this then i'll preview it on the front end so let me just go ahead and press ctrl k and preview on the front end and as you can see, it retrieved the array, which is total results 83 and the results per page one. So now I want the total results. So what I'll do is first access the array and then get the total results. So let me come back. So what I do, I'm trying to access the array. So now let me remove this dump, put the double pipe symbol and I'll paste that save oh no let me put the dump again so dump save it and let me go ahead and check it on the front end refresh and you see the value is 83. let me put it in a section so it's in the center of the page so just wrap it in a section drop the basic text in there okay save it now and we we'll go back and refresh. See, 83. That is the value of the total number of videos that were received. Let's go ahead and see how we can retrieve other values. So come back to this dump R. Look at the array again. So just follow it in line. So this is the line. As long as it's in the same line, we don't need to access double time. So we just keep going down and what we're getting here now is items, okay? And let's see. So within the items, so this is items. It is now inside our array. Within the items, we'll go to zero. So there's items, double pipe symbol, zero, double pipe symbol to access this zero. And finally, we we'll get to, let's see, snippets, double pipe symbol. So let's just go it in order. 
So come to items, copy that. Let's go and duplicate this basic text. So duplicate. So we're starting from the get. I'm just delete everything. So it's get colon yt. Then I'll put the double pipe symbol. Let me move all the spaces. And the first thing we're looking for is the items. Okay. Let's go back. So now I've accessed the items. The next thing we're accessing is the zero. So come double pipe symbol zero. Double pipe symbol again because we're accessing another thing. So we have accessed the zero. And within that zero, the next thing we're accessing is the snippet because I'm trying to get the title, description, and other information. So copy snippet, paste it, double pipe symbol again. So now that I'm inside the snippet, what do I want to get? I want to get the title. So the title, copy and paste that. Let's save it and see if we get the actual value. Come to the front end, refresh. And you see, this is the value, which is DD Live 10, Live Dynamic Shortcodes. And the beauty of this is that because we've already saved it in a cache, we're not running this call multiple times. It's only run once and that's it. So we are saving on our API calls for the YouTube channel because the search within the YouTube API takes a lot of credits. So if you do like about, I think five or six searches, that's the end of your quota for the day. You have to buy extra quota or you've used up your free allowance. But see, I can keep retrieving multiple things because I've already retrieved the value and I've saved it in the cache. The cache, I've put the expiration date to be every day. So it will only be cleared out on a daily basis. You can use the delete cache if you want to quickly delete the cache, but you don't really need to delete the cache. You just let it expire and then it will regenerate for the next day. So that's how I got the value for this one. So we can now start using all of these values inside different elements or widgets that we want. And it's not only restricted to the Bricks Builder. You can use it in Elementor. You can use it in Bricks, in Breakdance, even in Gutenberg. So that's why I also pair it with GreenShift and it works with GreenShift. The only thing that you need to watch out for is that a lot of times it will not show up in the builder. So that is the only downside for now. It will only show up on the front end. So you have to open a separate page and you'll be doing the live refresh so that you can see what it looks like on the front end. So if you are okay with that, like I am, I don't really bother too much with what is shown in the back end. I know sometimes it doesn't show up properly in the back end, so I'm used to it. I just open another page where I look at the front end and I look at the back end while I'm editing, just like as if I'm writing code myself. But yeah, this is how it is with dynamic shortcodes. And you can do so many things with this dynamic shortcode. So let's say, for example, you wanted to hype up this value a little bit. You can now come to this value. I'll come to the front end. Let's go back to this first code. And what you can now do is you can do some kind of like addition or multiplication on this one. So let's say I want to pretend. So I'll just put the multiplication, put the column and say I want to multiply the whole of this code by two. And then I'll close the curly brace, save it. And let me go ahead and preview on the front end, refresh and see, I get 166 because that's 83 multiplied by two. So you can do some other kind of tricks on the short code itself to retrieve some other fun, fancy data if you like. So that's how I was able to build my front page of my website. So let me go back and show you the front page. And you can see, this is the value, 83 videos. And I was able to use dynamic shortcodes as well to tell us how many written articles that I wrote for the page. And I'm always retrieving the latest video in the page without having to actually write it myself. So you can click on the YouTube 
video. You can see the title. I can add some other extra data, which I didn't add here. You can put the description and other things like that. And everything just pulls through successfully. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll try to break down some of these other shortcut types for you in the future and how you can use them. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section and I'll try to answer your questions as best as I can. And if you're using dynamic shortcodes, let me know in the comments if you're using it. If you feel dynamic shortcodes is over the top and you have a better solution, please also let me know in the comment section so that I can go ahead and check out your own solution. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.